Hello everybody, hoping you are doing well. Uh, today we are going to start chapter uh, 6, which is about sharing stress. And to recall, uh, from chapter 1, uh, we have taken tau to be, the average uh, stress to be, the force over the area, right? So, tau equals to P over A from chapter 1, where P is the parallel force uh, parallel to the cross section. And this equation gives us the average stress over the area. Now, in this chapter, we are going to take this equation tau, the shear formula tau equals to VQ over I T. So this equation gives uh, gives us the stress at a specific point in the cross section of a beam. So here V is the shear force. Okay, V is the shear force. Q is the first moment of area. I is the moment of inertia, and T is the width of the section plane. Okay. So say for example we have this I beam. And we want to calculate uh, the shearing stress at this point. Okay, so we are going to take a cut here section, and Q we will take uh, Q A prime to be to calculate Q. A, uh, we must first identify A prime. So we have two choices: either we will take the upper or the lower part. Here it's easier to take the upper part. Okay, so here is our A prime. And the first month area equals to the area multiplied by y bar prime. Okay, so here y bar prime is the distance from the neutral axis till the centroid of a prime. Okay, so here is this distance is y bar prime. Okay, now the other, uh, the third equation that we took, which which talks about shearing stress, is from chapter three. Recall, tau equals to the torque multiplied by the rho or the distance over the polar moment of inertia. Okay. Also, uh, I would like to tell you that the shearing stress diagram, okay, is a parabolic one. So here, let's say we have this W shape. Here is our neutral axis. So the shearing stress diagram will be first of all here. We will we will start from zero, then this part. Okay, will be like that, and then here, here is tau b at the flange. Okay, at the junction between the flange and the wall. Then we are going to have a jump. Why? Since here, uh, T say for example here it is one hundred, the width of the flange. Then suddenly it will be, say for example, 10, the width of the web, okay? And here we can see the thickness is in the dominant. So it's inversely proportional. So when T increases, or when T decreases, tau will increase. So we are going to have a jump, okay? And then at the neutral axis it will be maximum, and then since it is symmetrical it will return and it will have the same shape okay now uh, also as a quick note uh, sh now we should include the uh, a new term to chapter 5 
which is the beam design. So shear consideration in design, if it's required the, the width or the height, okay, we are going to use our two equations. The, shear, uh, the average long stress due to bending, MC over I, and also we now uh, took the shear formula, VQ over I, T. So from each equation, we are going to have two values of P or H, and we are going to choose the larger one, okay? Or dimension, since we are dealing now with dimensions. And the second type of problems in design is select the most economical shape, right? So we are going first of all to use our equation from chapter 4, MC over I, then or M over the section modulus. Then we will get S minimum. Then what's new here, we should make a shear check. So check shear. So if it's okay, we are going to choose this, this the section that we have just from the appendix. So tau should be less than or equal to tau allowable that is given in the problem okay and this value we will get it from the equation pq over rt or we can use uh, tau maximum for the rectangular cross section which is a conservative equation okay 1.5 the shear force over the air okay or if we are uh, uh, taking our section from the appendix we can say tau max, okay, equal to V over the web area, area web. So these equations will give, give us an approximate or conservative answers. If we want to get accurate results, we are going to use VQ over IT. Okay, so this equation, this, this equation, V over area web, assumes that the shearing stress, shearing stress in the flanges can be neglect, neglected. Or in other words, the entire shear load is carried by the web. Okay. So this was a quick uh, overview or summary. Now let's start with our first example, and uh, uh, we are going to solve six problems. So here for the beam, for the beam and loading shown, consider section N M. Here is section N M, and determine the largest shearing stress in that section. So the largest shearing stress, as we have said uh, it will be at the neutral axis okay where at the surface the shear stress will be zero why because here at this point if we have a cut okay we have a cut here like this q will be or the area prime will be either the upper area or the lower area so now if we, if we, we are looking at the upper upper area a prime will be zero or q the first one area is zero okay so this is the opposite uh, of what we have learned uh, in the bending moment right the bending moment it was zero at the neutral axis since c is zero so here at the neutral axis it is zero and maximum at the surface okay why when we are looking uh, in terms of the shearing stress it is zero at the surface so here the, the largest shearing stress it will be at the neutral axis tau maximum and part b the shearing stress at point a here is point a. we are going to have in part b a cut okay we will take a section now first of all our equation is tau equals to vq VQ over IT. IT. B is constant and I will be constant also. Now, to find B, we must draw uh, or we should draw the Shimon diagram or we can take a section here and calculate 
the force, the, she the shearing force. So here, first of all, the reactions at A and B will be, since it's symmetry in both geometry and loading, we can say 40 plus 40 over 2 equals to 40. So here it will be 40 and 40, okay? 40 kilonewtons. So here is our shear diagram, or we can take, as I said, a section here. So the shear force is 40 kilonewtons at section NM. Now, to get the moment of inertia, here we have a whole rectangular shape. So we are going uh, to subtract the outer from the inner. So here is 100. So 100 cubed. The axis is passing uh, through the 100. So 100 cubed multiplied by the other dimension, which is also 100 millimeters over 12 minus 76 to the power 3 multiplied by 76 over 12. So it will give us this number in millimeter to the power 4. Now, let's move on to calculate the first moment of inertia of area, sorry, Q. So here, at, uh, we, we took the section to be at the neutral axis. Why? Because it's required the largest shearing stress in part A. So it's at the neutral axis. So Q is the summation of area Y bar pi. And y bar prime is the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of A prime. Okay, here is the centroid, and here is our neutral axis. Okay, so A1 multiplied by y bar 1, y bar 1, here is our a1 so 76 the width multiplied by the depth which is 12 okay here the width is 12 12 multiplied by distance from the centroid of this area to the neutral axis so here the total depth is 50 and here the depth of this a1 is 12, so we can say 50 minus 12 over 2, okay? So 50, the total depth, minus 12 over 2, which is 6. Plus, dealing now with these two vertical members, we can say 2 multiplied by the area, which is 12, okay? The thickness multiplied by the other dimensions, dimension which is the, the total depth which is 50 millimeters so 50 millimeters and the distance the distance from the centroid till the neutral axis is what is 50 the total depth over 2 so 25 so we're gonna get the first most area in millimeters for 3 70,000 and 128. Now, T, which is the width of section plane, uh, as if we have a knife and we are cutting, so we have cut, we have a cut here, and we have a cut here. So 12, so here, from here is 12, and from here is 12. So 12 plus 12 is 24 millimeters. Now, tau maximum will be VQ over RT. V, we have it from the cut or the shear diagram, which is 40 kilonewtons. I have multiplied it by 10 to 3 to let the newton and newtons. Now, Q, the first mode area. Okay, here it is. And the, the amount of inertia, we have calculated it. Okay. And the width of section plane is 24 millimeters. So, we are going to get the maximum shearing stress to be 21.05 megapascal. Now moving on uh, to calculate the shearing stress, but at point A, so as we have said, we are going to have a cut here, and the Q will be the distance from the centroid of this shear till the neutral axis. So it will be 50 
okay, which is 100 over 2, so here it's 50. And here is the thickness is 12. So 50 minus 12 over 2 will give, will give us y bar time. Okay, so here q will be a multiplied by y bar time. So here it's 50 minus 12 over 2. And the area will be 100 multiplied by the thickness or depth, which is 12 millimeters. Okay. So here it is 100 multiplied by 12 millimeters. So the unit is a millimeter cubed and it is 52,800 and also the T is 24 millimeters, right? Because here we have, let me erase this. Here we have the width is 12 and also we have a cut here. So 12 plus 12, as if we have an arc. So it's 24 millimeters, the width. So 24 millimeters, now just plug in with the numbers. Uh, the chain force is 40, and by 10 to the power 3, Q, we have calculated it, okay. I is constant, in millimeter is 4, 4, and T is 24, okay, T is 24. So we are going to get the shear resistance at point A to be 15.85 megapascal. Now let's move to, to our next problem here. Okay. Now for the beam and loading should determine the largest shearing stress in such an end. Here the largest is at the neutral axis. So first of all we are going to, to find where is the location of our neutral axis. So let's say it's here, somewhere here. And then we have two options, even uh, to calculate Q, even to take the upper part to be A prime or the lower part. So here it's easier to take the lower part, okay? And we have also to get uh, the value of the shear force in section NN. So also we can from the shear diagram or uh, uh, from status by taking a cut. So here the reactions will be 180 over 2 since we have a geometry in loading and dynamic and uh, geometry. So it will be 90 kilonewtons. And hence, having said that, the shearing force will be 90 kilonewtons in section NM. Okay? Now, to find the location of the neutral axis, y bar will be the summation of areas multiplied by y, y bar prime over the summation of areas. Okay, so here here we have uh, the same vertical number, so I multiplied it by 2, and the area is 20, okay, 20 by 80, which, which, which came from 100 millimeters minus 20, so this, this depth is 80, 80 millimeters. So 20 by 80 is the area, and y bar prime is, here is our reference, or the datum. Now the centro, the distance from the centroid of this vertical member, till the datum is, what, 80 over 2, okay? Which is the depth over 2, we give us the centroid of the rectangular shape. So 80 over 2, plus, now taking the here the last part the area will be 160 multiplied by 20 so 160 multiplied by 20 which is a1 and y bar prime will be the distance from the centroid of this shape till the data which will be 100 minus 20 over 2 okay so it will be 90 millimeters. Over the area, here is our first area of the two vertical bars. And here is the area of the third part. So it will give us that the neutral axis is at 65 millimeters from the bottom. So here is our neutral axis, okay? At 65 millimeters. Now, we should calculate the moment of inertia 
and we are going to use parallel accuracy from statics here we have two bars vertical bars so two and here uh, one over 12 since it's a rectangular uh, section here the depth is 80 and the horizontal axis x-axis is cutting the dimension 80 so 80 cubed multiplied by the other dimension which is 20 millimeter plus the area which is 80 multiplied by 20 and d will be the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of the vertical bar so here the neutral axis is somewhere here okay at a height of 65 millimeters and the centroid of this shape is at a height of 40 millimeters okay which is 80 over 2 so subtracting these two number 40 minus 65 to the power 2 will give us d okay d squared or we can say simply we will subtract these two numbers 80 over 2 which is y bar prime minus y bar okay now plus this part 1 over 12 20 to the power 3 multiplied by 160 plus 20 multiplied by 160 multiplied by this squared now this squared is the difference of this two numbers 65 and 90 okay 65 minus 90 or we can say here from the diagram it is 90 minus 65 to the power 2 So it is uh, the, the, the distance from or the length from the neutral axis till the centroid of this particular shape. So here the answer is in millimeter power 4 and the maximum will be at the neutral axis. So here is our neutral axis and it's a height at a height of 65 millimeters and as I have said we have two choices either to take the upper part or the lower part. Because but here, as we can see, it's easier to take the lower part. Why? Because if we took the upper part, or if we take the upper part, we are going to deal with three shapes. So here is our three parts. And here is the second part. And here is the third part. Okay? So it will take much time. So now taking, looking at the lower portion, here is the height is 65 millimeters okay and the width is 20 millimeters now calculating q the first multi area we will say 2 since we have two vertical bars and the area is 20 multiplied by 65 the width multiplied by the half now the difference between the neutral axis till the centroid of this part is how much it will be 65 over 2 okay the total depth over 2 which is 32.5 millimeters okay so we will get the first one area in millimeters for 3 and the width of this section plane is 40 millimeters why because here this section width is 20 millimeter and here it is also 20 millimeters so 20 plus 20 will give us 40 millimeters now the maximum will be V at section NN multiplied by Q that we have already found over the moment of inertia multiplied by the width of the section plane. So here V is 90 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 to let the, newton, the unit to be in newtons. So here is V 90 kilonewtons. Okay. And here is a Q. I, we also have found it, and T is 40 millimeters. So plugging in uh, the values in, this will give us 32.7 meter pascal. Okay, the maximum shearing stress. Okay, now moving on to our third problem, and here 
we should explain the concept of shear flow and it is a very important section okay and it is uh, talking about that built up members okay and uh, the shear flow first of all help, uh, helps us to find the sliding force okay that the bolts are going to resist so that uh, we can avoid failure okay and here the cut or the section will be uh, at the location that you are going to have either a glue or a weld or nails so here for example here is our weld so we are going to have a cut here also we are going to have a cut here now the shear the shear flow equation is small q which is equal to the tau multiplied by the thickness so it will be bq over i bq over i and the unit is in newton over the length so force over length or we can say q is also equals to f the force at the nails over the spacing okay so say for example we have this built up member from three parts okay and our bolts are here okay and here is we will put a term n which is which represent the number of nails so first of all here is our nails okay we have two choices we will say if we take out the nail which member is connected to the rest of the of this structure so here we have two choices either we will take this to be a prime okay so here will be the separation and here will be a bar or a prime okay and next question that we will ask ourselves is how many bolts or nails is connecting this part that we have removed with the rest of the body so here n is one and the q will be the first multiple area will be say for example here is our neutral axis so q is a let's start by y finding the area is easy now y bar prime will be also the distance okay from the, the distance from the centroid of this shape till the neutral axis okay and since the shearing force is, is applied vertically, so y is also vertical. Okay, we will not say y will be the distance from here to here. That is wrong. So the question can be, what is the spacing between the bolts? So here, Okay, here, here are also the bolts at, at a fixed spacing. So here is S. Okay, so, so the first question that may ask um, that we, we were uh, asked in the exam what is the spacing between the bolts S or what is the next question can be what is the q the shear flow okay or the third question that they may ask what is the vertical shear force v on the beam okay or the third question what is the allowable force the fourth question what is the allowable force on the nail so of nail so these four requirements can be found using one equation okay and this equation is very important we can say q is equal to v over i Okay, which is also equal to F nail 
multiplied by n by n over s. So here, here is a very important equation. And now, it's uh, also in addition to that, they can uh, from chapter one they can also require the changes at the nail. So since we have found f nail, we can simply say f nail over the area of the nail, which is pi over four diameter squared or pi r squared. Okay. And uh, my last uh, note here, if, if S is to be required in the problem to be rounded to the nearest millimeter, we have to round it down for safety, okay? Unlike the diameter. So the diameters, we will round up. But here the spacing, we, uh, when we round it down, we will guarantee that we will have more nails, hence, uh, we will be in the, uh, in the safe side, on the safe side. So let's start here with our problem. We have two W200 multiplied by 462.1 rod C sections are to be welded at A and B in either of the two ways shown to form a composite beam. Knowing for each weld, the allowable horizontal shearing force is 500 kN per meter of weld. So Q for one weld is 500 kN newtons per meter, but since we have two welds up and down, okay, or two bodies, we are going to multiply it by two. So two multiplied by 500, this will give us 100 kN per meter. And we can know from the unit that it is, uh, this number is uh, represent the shear flow, since it's a force per length. Now, what's required is determine the maximum allowable shear in the opposite beam, composite beam for each of the two arrangements shown. So we have two arrangements and we have to find the maximum allowable shear. Okay? The maximum allowable shear. Now, from the appendix, we are going to get these properties, the area in millimeters for two, the depth of one of one section. So here the depth is two or three millimeters. And here the T is since it's related, it's also two hundred or three millimeters. And the flange width is two or three also. So here it is also two or three. And here it's also two or three. So two or three millimeters and two or three millimeters. And the moment of inertia about the x-axis is 45.8 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 and millimeters to the power 4. And in the y direction, uh, it is 15.4 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 and millimeters to the power 4. So here, since we have a weld and we have two sections above each other, we will use parallel axis theorem. OK? So here, here is the neutral axis since it's symmetric and to find the i for one shape okay we are going to use the parallel axis here we will say i bar okay which is 45.8 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 plus the area which is 5860 5, multiplied by the distance from the centroid of of the first of uh, this W section till the neutral axis, which will be the total depth over two. So D over two, okay? So two or three over two squared multiplied by the area plus I bar, okay? This this whole term represents only one section, one W section. And now, since we have two sections, we are going to multiply it by two. So, in part A, Ix will be this number, the amount of inertia, in millimeters power 4. Now, we should find the cube. Now, after we have a cut 
we had a cut at the weld okay and here we are dealing with a built up members we have two built up members or w sections uh, welded to each other so here is our cut at the neutral axis and we have two choices either to take this section or the lower w section so it doesn't matter here i took the upper section and here is our neutral axis now here is the x axis and the y axis and the total depth is 203 millimeters now q is area multiplied by y bar prime and y bar prime is a distance from the centroid of the section okay or, or of a prime so here it is a prime multiplied by the distance from the centroid till the neutral axis so here the distance will be 2 or 3 over 2 so 2 or 3 over 2 multiplied by the area will give us the first moment of area in millimeters to the power 3 and as we have said the shear flow is 100 kilometers per meters for the two welds now uh, it's advised to keep the units in newton millimeters so 1000 kilometers per meters i have multiplied it by uh, this factor 1 kN is 1000 newtons so kN will be cancelled with kN and 1 meter is 1000 millimeters so meters will also be cancelled out with millimeters and we are left with and here the 1000 will go with 1000 and here we are left with newton per millimeters okay so it's the same now here is our equation q is vq over i the shear flow so hence the shear force is the allowable is i until by the shear force or the first moment of error here the moment of inertia we have found it okay in millimeters of our four the shear flow is 1000 newton per millimeter okay and the first moment of area is 500 uh, 5,094 okay in millimeter power 3 now the answer will uh, be 357 kilonewtons it will first give us uh, the answer in newtons and then I have divided by 1000 now in part B here is our section and here is our weld so the neutral axis is here and we are going to take the upper part now to find the, the, the moment of inertia also the same constant applies now looking at the upper section only we will use a parallel axis theorem we will say y bar prime okay because here it is rotating about the horizontal axis which is y okay because the section is rotated so here we will take y i y bar is 15.4 multiplied by 10 to power 6 from the appendix so here is i bar plus using a parallel axis here we need the area which is 5860 okay and multiplied by the distance which is from the centroid of our shape till the neutral axis correct so this will be the width of the flange which is also it is two, two or three millimeters over two so two or three meters over two squared so this will give us the moment of inertia in millimeters over four now calculating q it will be the area this whole area a prime which is five thousand eight hundred and sixty multiplied by the distance from also the centroid till the neutral axis because here we will have the cut at the weld okay so the distance is also 2 or 3 over 2 okay and we will get the first moment area now so only substitution d will be i multiplied by shear flow over first moment area so here is the the moment of inertia 151.54 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 in millimeter power 4 the shear flow is also 1000 newton per millimeter it's constant 
and in both cases, and the first multi area is uh, here, here, here we have got it. So we will take it into the denominator, and the unit is in millimeters over scale. So this will give us the shearing force in newtons, and I have converted it to kilonewtons. Now, moving on to this problem, and it's a past problem from past exam. Here it's a good problem. Here the bit up pulling. So when we see a bit up, we will know that we are going to use the shear flow concept. Shown is subject to a vertical shear V of 8 kN. Okay, from the units, we can know that it's a force and it is V. Known that the nails are spaced longitudinally. Okay, so also here we will have a nails like this. Okay, placed longitudinally every 60 millimeters. So the at A, so the spacing at A is 60 millimeters and every 0.5 millimeters at B and here is the nails is every here the distance is 25 millimeters okay determine the shearing force in the nails so what's required the shearing force in the nails so F nail and here uh, they have simplified the problem uh, the moment of inertia is given to be 1.5 5 of 4 multiplied by 10 to the power 9. Okay. Recall our uh, quotient equation Q equals 2. PQ over I equals 2. F nail multiplied by number of nails in A prime that we have chosen over the spacing S. Here uh, we can say that Q divided by N. Okay. But to be in a, to keep the, the equation in terms of Q only, so uh, I have taken N here, okay, and we are left by this equation. Now, to begin by part A, so at A, we are going to have a cut here, right? Because here, uh, the nail is connecting this part to the rest of the heart of the whole body. So, taking only this uh, rectangular shape, which has a dimension of 50 multiplied by 100 millimeters, and here is A prime. And we know that since it's symmetric or regular shape, the neutral axis is at the middle. So, here it's the total depth is 400 millimeters. So, from the neutral axis to the surface is 200 millimeters. Okay? And y bar prime that we need when we calculate the first amount of area is the distance from the centroid of this rectangular, small rectangular shape to the neutral axis. So the distance will be 200 minus 100 over 2. Okay? So from here till here, it will be 200 minus 100 over 2, which is 150 millimeters. And the area is 100 by 50. So 100 by 50, this will give us 750,000, uh, the first amount of area, in millimeters for 3. Now here is our equation. V is given to be 8 kilonewtons, so 8 multiplied by 10 to power 3 to be in newtons. Q, we have calculated it. And I is given in millimeters to power 4. Okay, here in the problem equals to the unknown F nail okay at A multiplied by N the number of nails which is 1 the number of nails that's connecting this part by the whole body is 1 nail or 1 bolt so 1 here we can put 1 here it's 1 over the spacing at A so the spacing at A is 60 millimeters 60 okay so the force, the nails at A is 239 newtons. Now, moving on to part B, uh, where we should uh, look or have a cut at B. Okay, so when we remove this part, 
when we take a section here, we will remove this whole part, okay? Because it's a built up member. We can't say we will just take a section like that. That's wrong, okay? Because here we are dealing with a concept of shear flow. So here is our body, okay? And the Q will be. Here is first of all our neutral axis, and the depth is 200 millimeters, uh, or the distance from the surface to the neutral axis, because the total depth is given in the problem to be 400 millimeters. Okay. Now Q, looking first of all at this rectangular shape, it will be 300 by the depth, which is 50 millimeters. This is the area multiplied by the distance from the centroid okay till the neutral axis so 200 the total depth minus 50 over 2 200 minus 50 over 2 plus 2 because we have two symmetric shapes and the area is 100 by 50 of this small shape and the distance from the central of this shape till the neutral axis is 200 minus 100 over 2 okay so 200 minus 100 over 2 the distance from here to here will be 150 and this whole term will give us the q in millimeters power 3 okay now our equation bq over bq over i v in newtons q we have found it i is constant which is given in the problem and the problem f nail is uh, is unknown okay okay but but here I forgot to put two. Okay, here I must put two since we have two nails here and here. Okay, over the spacing, which is 25. So the force at nail B is five 549 meters. Now let's move on to this problem. Here we have three planks are connected as shown by bolts of 10 mm diameters. So here is here is our bolts spaced every 150 mm along the longitudinal axis of the beam. So the spacing is 150. For a vertical shear of 11 kN, so B is 11, determine the average shearing stress in the bolt. So what's required is the average shearing stress in the bolt. Tau. First of all, we are going to get the F nail from our equation Q equals to BQ over I equals to F nail multiplied by N over the spacing. So here is our unknown. And I am going to solve this problem by two ways. First of all, I will be taking this vertical bar, okay, and N will be 1. N will be one since we have only one bar connecting this part that I have removed by the other body and in the second case I'm going to take this middle area to be a prime and N is going to be two since there are two nails connecting this area by the other body so this in the second case this will be a prime that I'm going to remove and uh, we have two nails that are connected it to the whole body, remaining body. Okay, spacing is given. I, not sure we are going to calculate it. Q, we are going to calculate it. And the shear force is given. So after getting the F nail, we are going to use this equation from chapter 1 over the area of the bolt. Okay, and sometimes uh, the diameter of the bolt is given, is required. So we can say pi d squared over 4 and we can get the diameter so now let's find the centroid 
y equals to y multiplied by y bar prime over summation of areas. So here we have two vertical bars. So two multiplied by the area, which is 50 by 250, 50 by 250. And the distance from the centroid till their datum is 250 over two, which is 125. Okay, 125 plus this middle area. Uh, it will the area of this middle area is 100 by 250. So 250 by 100 multiplied by the distance from the centroid till the, the data. Okay, so 250 minus 100 over 2. Okay, so this will be 200. Okay, 200. Over the area, so here is the area. 2 multiplied by 50 multiplied by 250. And here 250 multiplied by 100. Okay. And we will get that the neutral axis is at the distance of 162.5 millimeters from the data. Okay, now. So let's say here is our neutral axis. Okay. Here is our neutral axis, NA. Now to find I from inertia using the parallel axis theorem, we have two vertical bars, so two, and one over 12 multiplied by 250 cubed, so 250 cubed, because we are now looking at this one vertical bar, and the axis is passing through this dimension, so it's cubed, multiplied by the other dimensions, which is 50 by 50, plus the area, which is 250 by 50, and D is the difference between this number and this number the y bar and y prime okay so it's the distance from the centroid of this shape till the neutral axis okay here is the distance square plus 1 over 12 multiplied by 100 cubed 100 cubed looking at this area we are calculating the amount of inertia, so 1 over 12, 100, this is 100, and it is the dimension that is passed through, so 100 cubed multiplied, to, uh, multiplied by 250, plus the area, which is 100 multiplied by 250, and D is the distance from Y bar, or the neutral axis, till the centroid of this shape, okay? So from the centroid till the neutral axis, which is the y bar 162.5 minus this number 200 y prime, okay, square. So we get the moment of inertia and millimeter to power four. Now calculating q, it will be area multiplied by y bar prime. So the area, uh, as I said. In the first case, I'm going to spread this part, okay, or this part, it doesn't matter. So the area is 50 multiplied by 250, 250 multiplied by 50, and the neutral axis is at a distance of 162.5 millimeters. So 162.5 millimeters uh, is the neutral axis, and the centroid of this rectangular shape is 250 over 2, so 125. So the difference between these two numbers, 162.125 minus 125 is 35.5 millimeters. Okay. So here is here the distance is 37.5 millimeters. Okay. Or we can say it is y prime it is the same number we can take it from here easy okay so the answer is n millimeter to power 3 now using this equation vq over i equals to f n multiplied by s here the number of poles that's connecting this part by the other body is one n so here multiply it by one so f n will be vq s over i the shearing force is given 11 in newtons, but I have multiplied it by 10 to the power 3 to keep it in newtons. 
the first mountain area I found it okay and the spacing is given to be 150 millimeters right 150 millimeters over motor inertia okay here is the motor inertia and millimeter to power 4 and I will get the F nail okay any newtons so it's about it's, uh, 3500 now I can use it from chapter 1 F nail over the area of the bolts so here is F nail in newtons the area of the bolt by over 4 diameter is given in the problem to be 10 millimeters for 2 so the shearing stress in the bolt is 44.4 49 megapascal now what if we took the middle area I want to prove that we will get the same result now taking this the middle area the area will be 100 multiplied by 250 correct 100 by 250 I am now considering this middle part only so 250 by 100 now the distance from the neutral axis so uh, here is our neutral axis, okay? The neutral axis is at the distance of 162.5 millimeters, okay? And the centroid is at the distance of 200 millimeters from the data. So taking the difference of these two numbers, this will give us 37.5 millimeters, the D or Y prime. Okay, so here also it will give us 37.5 millimeters, 200 minus 162.5 to save time. So this will give us the answer in millimeters for 3, and here is our equation VQ over I equals to F nail plus by N over S. So here the Q will be different okay so what will be different only the Q and here we have the number of nails to be 2 otherwise the spacing is, is constant sharing force is also constant and the amount of inertia is constant but notice that this Q over 2 will equal to or will give us a value of the same Q in part A so here notice 468,000 and here Q was 468,000 okay so it's the same it doesn't matter where we are going to take a prime so here we are going to take uh, we are going to have the same answer regarding the force at the nails and hence the shear stress will be the same since the diameter is also the, uh, equal so 44.49 megapascal and 44.49 megapascal so that just was approved and here uh, our, here is our last problem here what's given the american standard road steel beam shown has been reinforced by attaching to it 16 by 200 millimeter plate so here we have a plate and here we have also a plate 16 millimeter by 200 millimeters using bolts of 18 millimeter diameter space longitudinally every 120 millimeters so spacing is 120 knowing that the allowable average shearing stress in the bolts is 90 megapascal so 90 megapascal is the average shearing stress determine the largest permissible shearing force so v is required and the diameter of the bolts is 18 millimeters we have these three equations okay or we can say or we can see here is our equation plus the equation that says from chapter 1 tau equals to f nail over the area of the bolt okay so now from the appendix uh, the depth of the w section is 3 or 5 millimeters okay so here 310 multiplied by 52 we are going uh, from the appendix we can take the depth 305 millimeters 
So now uh, tau equals to F nail over the area, correct? The tau is given to be 90, tau in the nails. F nail is unknown, and the area, we can get it. Pi over 4, diameter is given to be 18 millimeters, is power 2. So, F nail is 22, around 23,000 in newtons. Now, from the shearing flow equation, Q equals to F nail multiplied by 2 over, multiplied by 2 over S. Now, why I have put here 2? Because the number of bolts that's connecting the plate by the other section is 2 bolts. Okay, so here will be the separation. Okay, when we spread the plate uh, from the rest of the S section. Now, a Q will be 3.7 Newton per millimeters. Okay, F nail, we have found it here. And the spacing is provided in the program to be 120 millimeters. Or we can use it as one equation. We can say this equation is faster. Now we need I and Q. I we are going to use parallel axis theorem. Why? Uh, because we have a plates up and two plates up and from up and down. Now I bar is from the appendix. It's going to be 94.9 and 12 by 10 for 6 millimeters for 4. Now, Ix, we are going to find it from parallel active theorem. First of all, y bar plus 2, 2 plates. Now, the plates, we are going to find it from the parallel active theorem. Yeah, in other words, we have here our W section, okay. It's a rough sketch. And from shapes, I'm going to draw in, a, in the green color the two plates. Okay, and here, here is our other plate. Now, here is our neutral axis. So I total will be, first of all, we want inertia of this W section, and here uh, this, the neutral axis is at the centroid, so it's just I bar for the W shape, because we are not going to, we are not going to use parallax theorem for the W section, no need, since the distance from the centroid of this section and the neutral axis is zero, plus the, the mountain inertia of the two plates, we are going to say two, and we are going to use parallel axis here. I bar for the plate, okay, which is a rectangle. So here the depth is 16, so I am going to say one over 12 multiplied by 16 to power three. So here 16, we can notice 16 to power three, okay. And the width of the plate is 200, given by in the problem, 200 by 16. Over 12 plus the area, because I'm going to use parallel axiom, the area of the plate is 200 by 16, plus the distance from, here we should be careful, the distance from the centroid of this plate till the neutral axis. And here we are going to calculate it by saying this total depth is 3 of 5, right, from the appendix. So here the distance is 3 over 5, 3 of 5 over 2. Plus this depth divided by 2, which is 16 over 2, right? To reach this point. So plus 16 over 2 and d squared. And we are going to find the amount of energy to be 25.99 and 12 by 10 to 4, 7 millimeter power 4. Now, Q, we are going to have a cut here. Okay, here, right? Since the nails are connecting the plates, the plate by the W section. So the area of the plate, if I, if I separated this, uh, I have a cut here at the nails, 
we are going to separate this left right so here is a prime now the area of a prime is 200 by 16 which is the area of the plate and the distance from a prime till the neutral axis okay the distance from the a prime till the neutral axis we have already found which is here okay 305 plus 16 over 2 so y bar y bar prime we can find we can take it from the d in the parallel axis here so here q will be vq over i and q we have found it here to be 30 381.7 newton millimeters the shearing force is unknown q we have already found it okay in millimeters for three and i we have also calculated it okay so when equation one unknown this will give us b to be in newtons and then i have to convert it to be in newtons by dividing it by 1000 so the shearing force will be 193.16 kilonewtons so by this uh, we have finished this tutorial uh, hoping this was uh, useful and goodbye